May the Lord lift up the light of So I ended up seeing this clip of this so-called man of faith, man of God, and I made this video about him without researching this man at all. Comes to find out my assumption, which wasn't an assumption at all, was true and it was from the Lord. This man is an occultist, a Freemason fool. His countenance upon us and give us peace. Peace in our families, peace across this land, and dare I ask, O oh Lord, peace even in this chamber, now and evermore. We ask it in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma, and God known by many names, by many different faiths. A man and a woman. The representatives Hello friends and brethren, enemies and strangers. This is the Digger of the Word channel, a ministry of Jesus Christ. And my name is Bible Digger. Because I'm an amateur archeologist, but that's not the only thing I dig. I also dig in here for the truth. your brother in Christ or sister in Christ you can call me brother Trey or you can call me thrice because I'm the third you just watched a video of a deceived man out of hell sometimes it's hard to say whether someone's deceived or whether they're doing it on purpose I personally believe that this man understands what he's doing, but is greatly deceived also. Some people just don't understand what they're doing at all when it comes to doctrine and when it comes to beguiling and fooling people, and then others do. I believe this man knows to a certain extent. However, I believe it's about 50-50 what he knows and what he's deceived by. If he's lying to the people, if he's just deceived and believes it himself. It's about 50-50 with this cat. And I'm going to tell you why I believe that. It's a feeling of discernment I have that this man is probably a Freemason. As you notice, he says, let the light, the continents of his light shine on us, or whatever. Well, he doesn't say the light of the world is Jesus Christ like we say it. When these people say, talk about light, they're speaking about knowledge of their craft, Freemasonry. He's an occultist. Whether he's a Freemason or not, he's an occultist, I can guarantee you that. And it's, uh, it's amusing to me. He's an occultist that has infiltrated another cult who he believes are Christians. Now, whether he believes they're Christians or not, I'm not sure. Or whether he just became a Methodist preacher to fool people, that's up for debate. But it really doesn't matter to me. This man is a seminary-taught Methodist 
pastor, pastor, with a degree in Bible college. And here you got this deceived hound dog out of hell. He's a total heathen. And we'll break it down. I want you to notice how he starts off talking about peace. And that's how this new age delusion, this antichrist spirit is going to come on the scene. The antichrist spirit's already here. They're going to come in the name of peace and love because he wants to be like the most high and the fruits of the spirit some of them are peace and love that's two of the fruits of the spirit that's named in the scriptures but they're going to come in peace and love and he said peace five times at the beginning of this clip and if you disagree with his message you're just unpeaceful and you're a, a dissident and you're an enemy combatant So, excuse me, I'm having a moment. It's not so much that um, I'm angry at this man, it's that I'm angry about the people that I see responding to this video. They don't even understand what's going on. The people that responded to this video, all they can focus on was the end word, a woman, instead of a man. And they totally ignore the rest of the message, because they're just as lost as lost can be. Now, I want to draw your attention to something. John the Baptist came to cry out in the wilderness to prepare the way of him that was to come. The same thing's going to happen with the Antichrist. Antichrist spirit's already here. His workers are already here. They're spreading the message of him that is to come and peace of this new age, one world religion of peace and love of all gods by many different names and many different faiths. The same God. That is your new age religion that's coming. That is the Antichrist spirit that's among us even today. The Bible says there are many Antichrists going out into the world. Just as John the Baptist went out to prepare the way for him that was to come. Hmm. I want you to take note of something. If you've seen anyone else comment, on this clip I just showed you I'll just give one example I've seen about five of them the Hodge twins they claim to be conservatives Christians these men are not Christians I saw the clip on Alex Jones he claims to be a Christian Alex Jones is not a Christian and all they can focus on is the last word a woman a man and a woman it means absolutely nothing. A woman is a made-up word. It means nothing to me. It's what he said just before that that should bother Christians. But they're not Christians. So they don't have discernment. They don't have... I don't know if they have the spirit or not. God forbid that I say that. But they sure don't have discernment, do they? Because right before he said, A woman... This hound dog out of hell says, and he actually says these words. We pray in the almighty name of the monotheistic, monotheistic uh, God, uh, Brahma. Brahma. This guy called on the name of Brahma in prayer and said, we pray to this God. And then he says... And to the God of many different names across many different faiths. 
I want you to know whose name he called, which is very strange to me. Brahma. This man said this. <laughs> a seminary taught pastor. You know, and it's funny to me that all these people making these videos and they're concentrating on the last word, a woman. They've got hundreds of thousands of views, millions. It's like the stupider you are, the more popular you are in these end times. And if you speak the truth, the less views you have and the un most unpopular, unpopular you can be. Sorry, I can't speak tonight. I need to drink more water. The more unpopular you will be if you speak the truth. You know, I watch the conservative twins, the Hodge twins. They have a channel called Conservative Twins. I watched this clip on their uh, channel too earlier, and, you know, they said... They went in, went into this, like, satire tirade of preaching, like, just a bunch of satire stuff about how, you know, they were just saying a bunch of crazy stuff. And they were like, oh, yeah, if I could find a church that would preach like that, I'd throw all kinds of money into it. There you have it. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. They want to be entertained. They want to have that good time spirit, man, that that wild spirit, that, that funny, comical, you know, do what you want. You're all going to heaven anyway. No matter if you follow the doctrine of Christ, no matter if you follow God's law, hey, God knows your heart, right? Friends, God knowing your heart's a scary thing. <laughs> I wouldn't bank on that to get your butt in heaven. You better bank on bringing it to him as the high priest so that he can be just and faithful for, to forgive your sins after you've entered into the covenant. But most of these people haven't done that, including the man on this message. The man behind that microphone. The Lutheran church that he's a pastor of. Not a single one of them in there has entered into the covenant. They don't know how. The Hodge twins have not entered into the covenant. They don't know how. Alex Jones has not entered into the new covenant. He doesn't know how. All of their viewers have not entered into the covenant of Jesus Christ because they don't know how. I used to be just like that. You should think I could listen, watch, speak about, drink, smoke, whatever I wanted to when I was a Christian. Because I knew who Jesus Christ was and I wasn't going to deny him. Even though I had never read the word. I didn't know who he was in here. I didn't know what I was supposed to do, wasn't supposed to do. Until I heard by a preacher. That's my message. I could go over, the, over everything I just said again, but I know those with ears will hear. One more thing I want to add. Specifically about the Freemason cult of fools. <laughs> Knowledge bearers. Hmm. Light. Light bearers. Try to say that without laughing. <laughs> yeah, you're bearing light, all right, and it's of Lucifer. It's of hell. It's of Satan. And a long time ago, during the civil rights movement of the African American people in America, these occultists which were mainly white men, very rich, very powerful, very evil, they saw that they could use these people, these colored people, as political pawns, cannon fodder, and a way to bring down the people that they hate the most, the middle class, and destroy America. Not with the black man, not with the colored people, that's just a piece of the puzzle. I don't want you to think I'm saying that. But they started recruiting black Freemasons very heavily. 
and they give them a bunch of money and a bunch of power and a bunch of important positions and they push an agenda of separation. A house divided cannot stand. A house divided, divided against itself cannot stand. But they saw how powerful these people were in the civil rights movement. Okay? Now, if they can be used against their own house, which is America, not black or white, but America, then the police, which are largely Freemason, when they start giving these people reasons to riot on purpose, George uh, Floyd was a Freemason, the man with his knee on his neck was a Freemason, research it, they knew each other. So they create the riots, they create the situation, Freemason, Freemason, both sides of the line. And they start all this chaos, and the police sit there and watch it, and they stand down. However you watch. Whenever the middle class starts to raise up and gets tired of having their cities burnt down, the police will step in with, on force against those people. But anytime the coloreds will do it, they will be given the command to back down. I don't pretend to know what their agenda is or what their end game is. I kind of do, but I want you to open up your mind to that. They've been, Freemasons have been recruiting in the black community for a very long time. Low level Freemasons, I'm not talking to you. You don't know what's going on anyway. Just like another Freemason will tell you, you don't have the light. You can't talk about that, and I can't, I don't want to hear what you have to say. You can't talk to me about it. That's how they treat each other. You don't have the light yet. I can't talk to you about that. Low level Freemasons, talk, laugh, mock. You don't know a dead gum thing that's going on. You just don't. <laughs> so, it's interesting, the times that we're living in, it's very interesting. Very interesting. And I wanted to make this video because not a lot of people understand what's going on. I watched this video clip in several people's uh, vlogs or blogs and they don't know what's going on. They can concentrate on one word at the end of the sentence. A woman. They don't even pay attention to the man who's called on the name of the God of Brahma and every God by every other name and every other faith. The God of Brahma and we pray to the God of Brahma and <laughs> one God and many other names or whatever he says. So this is a new age religion, new age philosophy. It's what all these modern Bibles teach. A message, not the message. A messenger of God was Jesus Christ. Not the messenger of God, not the son of God, but a son of God. Not the word of God, but a word of God. Words of God, the message, not the word of God, not the message. You get where I'm going now? They believe there's many sons of God that have came. Muhammad, Buddha, yada, 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 yada. It ticks me off that people are so dense that they can't see what's going on. But it's okay. I mean, I say it ticks me off, but it really doesn't. When I'm making a video, it probably comes out more than anything. But That's the wide path, you know. Hey, this man's been to Bible college. He's got a degree. You think this man is? You think this man's that dumb? That he's been to even even him going to Bible seminary. He can't be that dumb to call upon the name of Brahma in prayer. But this is what the Jesuit Jesuit people in Bible seminary is teaching. This is why they have the New Age version of Bibles. That's not the King James Version. 
because they believe God goes by many names and many different faiths. These men that know Greek and Hebrew and they can tell you what the, the, the word really means in the King James Bible. That was translated incorrectly. That doesn't explain it properly. These wise men that are going to stand before God the ones that are deceived or that are deceiving their flock or deceiving other little wannabe Bible scholars on Facebook or wherever else running around talking about my King James Bible is not the Word of God because the Hebrew and Greek, the Hebrew and Greek, the Hebrew and Greek. Look how much I know about Hebrew and Greek. You think you're going to stand in front of God and say, look how much I know about Hebrew and Greek? Look how wise I am. I cracked the code. I figured out. I deciphered your word. You're out of your mind. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith that this is the Word of God, it is impossible to please God. I take it on faith that this is the complete Word of God right here, the King James Bible. However, you don't. And a lot of you have bigger problems than that because you've been baptized in the Catholic Trinity titles. You might as well have just run outside in the rain and jumped in the dead gum ditch and got wet because that's all that happened to you. Even this deceived hound dog out of hell behind this microphone with his mask on calls upon somebody's name when he's praying. Brahma. You didn't even get that called over you during baptism. You caught on the titles of somebody. Everybody has titles. What I do for work is I'm a driver. I'm an amateur archaeologist because I dig up ancient relics of the past. Ancient Indian artifacts. I'm a driver and an amateur archaeologist and a Christian. But if you go to somebody's house and you're looking for me and I might be there, I might not, and you say, I'm looking for the driver, the amateur archaeologist, and the Christian. You know, look at you like you're crazy because they don't know who you're talking about. If I give you a check to cash and I signed it, the driver, the amateur archaeologist, and the Christian, <laughs> or maybe I left it blank and you have to fill it in, that's going to work. You're going to have to call my name. <laughs> You're going to have to call my name. Sorry if this message came across a little stern, a little hard, a little angry. I didn't mean it to. But the wide path, man, it's something to behold. It's so wide. It's so vast. It's so heavily traveled with many people that go thereon. Even when I was unsaved, I could not stand ignorant people. Where the information's right there, yet it's like the stupider you are, the more they flock to information. The people giving the information, the stupider they are, the person on the TV, or the person wherever, they're going to get the big audience. And I'm not being covetous at all. I'm just saying, behold the wide path. Behold. Behold the Catholic religion. Behold the Hindu religion. Behold the Baptist religion. Why? Many go down that path. Hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube. Millions of views. But when you're talking about this, very narrow are the views. Very narrow are the people that follow and want to hear this. Marcus Rogers is another place I watched the video on. And he didn't, I don't even believe that he touched on that. But I couldn't watch too much of that man's video. Uh, I never can because he's such a hypocrite. 
He is such a hypocrite. He believes God became a man. Yeah, he believes in baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, as many apostolics do. But he's married to a divorced woman, I believe. Lord, forgive me if I'm lying. I can't remember. She's divorced or he's divorced. Either way, he has put away his ex-wife, which I know he has for a fact. Causeth her to commit adultery because she remarried. And wouldn't tell her the truth, being a preacher of God, supposedly. Hundreds of thousands of views. Every time he uploads the videos, hundreds of thousands, even millions. Couldn't tell his ex-wife, hey, I'm going to put you away, but if you remarry, you're going to be in adultery. Couldn't tell her that. If his new wife's married, he's in adultery. But he doesn't care about that. Nope. He just uploaded a video the other day, too, about how he was wrong about prophecy. About Trump getting into office. And who knows if Trump will pull it off tomorrow on the 6th. Who knows? I don't know what's going to happen. If he does, great. The prophecy was true, but this man got scared. He said Trump was going to be in office, and, and God showed him that he was going to get reelected. It was a prophecy. Well, now, before tomorrow, supposedly Trump has something planned tomorrow at the last minute. But he got scared a couple of days ago and put out a video saying, I didn't tell, you know, like, yeah, I prophesied, but in Jeremiah, Jeremiah told Hezekiah that uh, he was going to die. And then he, and then God changed his mind and gave him 15 more days. You see how the devil out of hell is such a snake? He said, prophecy is conditional. And if it don't come to pass, that don't mean my word. It means, uh, it doesn't mean I was wrong. It means God's changed his mind. Yeah, it does mean you're wrong. The Bible says, if a prophet prophesies something and it come not to pass, that he hath presumed it of himself. Fear not that prophet, he has spoken it presumptuously. That's what the Bible says. And in Jeremiah, Jeremiah's case, when he was talking to Hezekiah, he said, get your house in order, you're going to die. And Hezekiah repented. God knew he was going to repent before he even sent Jeremiah there to give him that word. He repented, and what did he do? Before that thing came to pass, before the prophecy came to pass, he sent Jeremiah back to that man and said, you now have, you have uh, 15 years. I believe it was 15 more years. If I said days, I'm sorry. So see, what Marcus Rogers is trying to do is compare himself to Jeremiah and say that God changed his mind. Or What, what Marcus Rogers was trying to say is that the prophecy don't come to pass. God changed his mind. But God changed his mind without telling you. God And God never changed his mind. God knew Hezekiah was going to repent. He, that's what he wanted Hezekiah to do. That's why he said, get your house in order, you're going to die. He knew that's what it was going to take for him to get 15 more years. God already knew that. And before that prophecy came to pass that he died, the same man that brought him the prophecy got a new word from God. An extension of the same prophecy it wasn't changed of the same prophecy just an extension God gave him the new word Marcus Rogers has no new word from God yet he tries to blame it on God and say if it don't come to pass you know what I'm, I'm done with this I'm done with these false prophets I'm done with these motivational speakers <sighs> with these vain people To my brethren in Christ, Godspeed. To everyone else, may grace abound.